Flex Data Modeling is based on the Model View Controller MVC, design pattern. In this video, you will learn how to apply this pattern to a simple application. In the MVC pattern, the model refers to the data objects in your application. The view refers to the user interface elements, and the controller handles the logic for how the model and view interact. In Flex applications, the model represents data like the array collection objects that contain the data returned from the HTTP service call. The view in an application might be a data grid control or other UI component. The controller in a Flex application can be a specialized implementation as in many frameworks like Cairngorm, but is often just the main application file in a simple implementation like the one we will apply in this video. I will use the Employee Portal Vehicle Request form for this example. The code for this application retrieves data, manipulates it in functions, and then displays it in UI components. Currently all the code used in this example is in one file. This may be suitable for small applications, but it is not typical to the majority of applications. In this video, you will learn how to separate the UI control into a separate custom component, which is the view. The retrieved data is the model and will be handled in class properties. The controller, which handles the business logic for the model and view, is the main application file. I will begin by creating the view. This means transferring the UI controls to a separate component. I'm creating a new directory in the source folder by selecting New folder, which you cannot see because it is outside the recording area, and naming it Components. I am right-clicking on the Components directory and selecting New MXML Component. In the dialog, I am naming the component Vehicle Request Form. I am removing the width and height so that the component will size itself to its content, and then I am clicking Finish. The new custom component file opens in the editor view where I am double-clicking on the tab to maximize it. Back in the main application, I am cutting the UI controls. And then pasting them in the vehicle request form component. When I save the file and the main application file, you can see that the main application file has some errors on the right side. In the problems view, which I am selecting in the lower right corner, you can see that these errors are related to the pickup date and return date. I am double clicking on one of the errors to locate the related code. The date chooser controls are no longer in the main application, so the functions that are referring to them are throwing errors. I'm going to fix these errors by moving the init app and date change handler functions from the main application into the vehicle request form. I am cutting these from the main application and then returning to the vehicle request form custom component to create a script block. And paste them in the code. The init app function is responsible for sending the HTTP service call and initializing the event listeners on the date chooser controls. The date change handler function handles the event when the date chooser is triggered. I am changing the name of the init app function to just init. This makes it more appropriate for its purpose in this component. I am also calling the init function from the creation complete event of the custom component. I am cutting the employeeservice.send method from the init function and then replacing the init app call in the creation complete event of the main application with this request.
I am saving both files. These warning messages indicate that the custom component is missing the calendar layout change event class import statement. The UI elements do use the calendar layout change event and the alert classes, so I'm copying those import statements from the main application and pasting them into the custom component. I can actually delete the calendar layout change event from the main application file, but I must leave the alert class since it is also used by the data service fault handler. I'm saving both files. To recap, I have moved the UI controls into the custom component, which is my view. I've also moved the two functions that manage the events for the date chooser controls to the component as well. However, I have made sure that the data request is still managed by the main application by moving the employeeservice.send method back to the creation complete event of the application container. Note that within the custom component UI elements, the drop down list controls data provider property is bound to the property employees. The employees property is the array collection instance created in the main application file that is populated with the return data from the service call. I will need to pass this data from the main application to the custom component via a custom component property. In the script block, after the import statements, I'm creating a public variable named employees that is data type to the array collection class. Note that Flash Builder has automatically imported the class for me since I use code assist. Remember that an ActionScript property that is bound to a UI control must use the bindable metadata directive. At this point, the vehicle request form view is complete. The component can accept data and populate the drop-down list control. It also handles the selection of dates from the date chooser controls. I am saving the file again. Now I must integrate the vehicle request form view back into the main application. In the UI components area of the code, I am adding an instance of the vehicle request form component. Note that Flash Builder's code assist tool can find the component in the components directory. When I select it, you can see that Flash Builder places the component in a namespace called components. When I scroll up to the opening application tag, you can see that Flash Builder has created this namespace for me. I am saving the file and running the application. The drop-down list control does not have any data in it. This is because I've created the employees property in the custom component, but I haven't used it in my code to send data to the component. Back in the main application file, I am adding the employees property to the custom component and then adding curly braces for the binding. Now what do I bind to? Remember that this employees property is a property of the vehicle request form custom component. Here it is in the component code. However, the main application file also has a property named employees. It is instantiated toward the top of the script block and then populated with the return data in the result handler. This is the property that I'm binding to. Even though the employees property of the vehicle request form and the employees property of the main application are named the same, they are not the same variables. The main application employees property is scoped to only exist in the main application. The vehicle request form components employees property can only be referenced from that custom component scope. I am referencing the application's employee property in the binding. I am saving the file and running the application again. When I select the drop down list control, I can now see that it is populated with data. I have successfully implemented a simple MVC design pattern where my view is the vehicle request form custom component, my model is the data stored in the employees property, and my controller is the business logic in the main application. 
For your next step, work through the exercise titled Separating the Model, View, and Controller.